Okay, uh, I was always asked about bands I was in, which ones were my favorite ones I played in, which ones I didn't like. And um, I'll tell you a story about the one I didn't like. It was a band called Only Flesh. Um, I had uh, met the singer Rev through a friend of mine who had a tattoo shop back in 2011. And they said that, uh, you know, he was putting his band together. He needed a bass player and a drummer. Or, oh, you play bass. They're on a label. You're going to make money. You're going to tour and all this shit. So I was like, okay. And I was giving some CDs and DVDs. And uh, I seen, like, all these, like, people with this show on the DVDs, which I'll get to later. You know, I mean, I thought this band was big and everything. So, um... I went and saw them before, you know, I joined and everything. So, I mean, the show was okay. So, I, uh, about a month later, I joined them and, um, Rev went and gave me these two basses. And he was like, oh, yeah, you can have these basses, you know. I really don't care about them. So, uh, they were playable. Uh, the one, the neck was severely bent. And the other one was just in pieces. It was like a five string. I don't play a five string to begin with. So, uh, you know, I wound up selling them, you know, because he said I could have them. So um, I used that money to put into uh, the bass I had. I went and got strings. Um, you know, I had my amp worked on and stuff. So um, anyway, I played my first show with them not long after that at the uh, 42nd Street Club in Greensburg. And uh, I had a good, I had a good time. You know, a lot of my friends were there and stuff. <laughs> so uh, anyway, next thing I know, I was going on some kind of tour with them, out, you know, out to Indianapolis. You know, and I, I just, you know, remember being out there, and uh, you know, not too many people showed up to the show. I mean, there was maybe only ten people in the audience plus the opening band, and. Um, after the show, the guys decide they're going to, you know, go party it up. So, you know, we stopped at a bar, stayed till it closed. Mind you, I don't drink. And um, next thing I know, there was an only other bar open was this, like, cantina-looking strip club. I don't know what it was, but when we got there, two cops searched us at the door. Um... We walk in with this zombie makeup on, and I mean, these people were just staring at us. I mean, they were all uh, Latino, and um, a couple guys sitting in a corner, I seen uh, Latin King tattoos, and I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> you know, I mean, I can tell when, you know, I'm not wanted, and nothing against Latin Kings, you know, um, you know, respect, you know, but I'm not going to go encroach on someone's territory. So, you know, we're there, they're acting a fool, I'm sitting there, you know, shitting myself, thinking, you know, oh, these guys are going to get in trouble. So, finally, the bar closed, uh, we went out in the parking lot, Rev was out there acting a fool, telling people, no, no, you can't go home, you know, we're just partying, and next thing I know, there was a guy getting on the phone, he was calling some dudes up, and I'm like, man, we better get the fuck out of here. So, after that, you know, they, uh... You know, the drummer Lefty went on record as saying that I said I hate Mexicans, and I never said that. All I said was our lives were put in danger because, you know, people playing a fool because they can't handle their liquor. And I'm not putting myself in danger because of a couple idiots. And mind you, it was cold up there. I mean, this was probably about November. And it's like the further north you get, the colder it gets so like the next day you know they were bitching and everything else about me and we went to uh, columbus ohio and uh it was fucking cold man i mean jesus i they had a like one of them suspension shows i stayed in the van to cover it up man i put like a, a ton of fucking blankets and whatever else was in there on me i mean it was fucking cold so I fell asleep afterward. We spent the night at someone's house. Next day, they went and did their suspension in the woods. And um, we got back home and everything. And I just remember thinking, you know, like, what the hell am I doing, you know? Because uh, just, the, you know, the way these guys were, you know, they, they were just work friendly. They were weird. 
and uh, you know they talk shit behind your back and everything and I'm like well I'm, I'm just gonna stay on because there's this big tour coming up in December and uh, I'm gonna you know do this so uh, yeah we had that uh, so the tour come up we left we went to uh, where was it? Uh, the first show we played was in uh, since uh, somewhere in Ohio, I think it was Cincinnati. Um, so you know, on this show here, it was just an open stage. You know, this was no you know set gig. It was an open stage. So um, I really didn't have much fun. After that, you know, we hit the road and everything. You know, we hit the Midwest. Uh, we played a sh another show in Indianapolis. No one was there. I mean, we were the, us in an opening band, we were the only ones there. I mean, there was nobody at these shows. And um, just being in that van with those guys, I mean, I'm going to tell you, you know, when you spend 24-7 with somebody in a van for a couple weeks, you really get to know them. And just the way they acted and the way they were behaving, I mean, it, it was unreal. I mean, they didn't act like fucking adults. I mean, they were acting like, oh, this is rock and roll. I'm like, whatever, man. I've been in a ton of bands. And, you know, I did my share of partying and everything else. But none of my bands I was in ever did the shit that they did. You know, I mean, they're taking pictures of themselves sitting on a toilet eating Doritos and drinking whiskey. You know, and... and just other stupid shit. I mean, they were acting like, you know, a bunch of five-year-old girls at this point. And, I mean, I just know I didn't really, you know, want to be there. Because my dad was in the hospital at the time. And I was kind of hoping something would happen where I would have to go home. But nothing bad. But just bad enough to where I would have to leave this tour. And we got down to St. Louis. And they're throwing a hissy fit down there because... You know, I really wasn't told very much. I know we got there, we were in the van, and uh, Rev and Damien start fighting. I don't know what it was about, you know, and it was just really dumb. And Rev spent the night in the van. He didn't want to be with us. And, uh, you know, we were in the hotel room, you know, just having a bit of fun. <sighs> you know, I mean, these guys, they have, like, you know, laptops and all this other shit. And, you know, at the time, I didn't know nothing. You know, I just had a cell phone. And I didn't even have a Facebook account at that time. So, you know, and I mean, these guys, they had money. And it was just kind of weird because I just, you know, after we played in uh, St. Louis, I just noticed, you know, they had some money on them. And, you know, it just really didn't dawn on me. But when I was in St. Louis, I remember I was when we were on stage, I turned my bass off. And people were there just to see the freak show. You know, he was, like, cutting his eyebrows and everything. And and I'm thinking, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> what, what am I doing in this band? So then um, we went to Arkansas. And uh, there was actually a show where there were people that showed up. And um, after that show, we went um, to stay at a band's house. And, uh, you know, they were really nice people. And I kind of pushed it because I'm like, yeah, these are people, they're nice and everything. And I was like, oh, they're a bunch of fucking hippies. You know, you just wanted to go hang with the fucking hippies. You know, I'd rather have hung out with those hippies, you know, than hung out with some of the other people that were there. So, Rev, you know, he isolated himself. I went out, you know, I, I enjoyed myself with these people because, you know, they were all down to earth. And the next day they made breakfast for us and everything. And next thing I know, we're on our way back, you know, and they're just talking shit on these people. And I'm like, what, what, what did these people do that was so horrible, you know? Oh, oh, they just wanted the cool band to hang out at their house, you know, figured you'd like these people. And uh, the keyboard player, Greg, pulls out a pair of panties, and he's like, oh, look what I stole out of her hamper. I'm like, yeah, you're fucking disgusting, you know? I mean, these people were real nice to us, and you're talking fucking shit on me, you steal the girl's panties. <laughs> So we get to Memphis and we got in a hotel there and I'm feeling more, you know, isolated from the band, you know, I mean, they just, you know, were cutting me out of a lot of shit, you know, like when I was in St. Louis, I would, you know, I went off on my own for a bit and they got pissed off because I went off on my own. I'm like, well, no one's fucking talking to me. So why the hell should I hang out with anybody? You know, I'm being treated horribly at this point. 
So, you know, in Memphis, it was kind of cool because we uh, played a show for uh, this motorcycle club called the Knights of Thor. You know, they were really hospitable. They were really nice to us. Um, the uh, chapter president gave me a pair of uh, leather gloves. You know, a really nice guy. And then the next day, we played in Nashville. And um, I just knew it was like the last one. Like after we got home, I'm, f I'm fucking leaving. And the people in Nashville, they were really nice to us and everything. And um, we got hooked up with a place to stay. So, um, but it was just, you know, on the way back, it was just, you know, Rev's just talking all this shit on me. Just, you know, they were saying, oh, I hate fucking Jews. You know, Jews this, Jews that. And I do have some Jewish heritage, which I found offensive. And they're like, well, you said you fucking hate Mexicans. I never fucking said that, you know. I mean, I did, I mean this dude just put us in danger one night. You know, I mean, we could have got killed. I mean, you don't run around a fucking parking lot, you know, to, oh, dude, you can't go home. You can't go home. We go to party. <sighs> so anyway, uh, I was so glad to get home. And um, I just remember I went home. I, I slept for like a couple of days. You know, I just, you know, didn't want to deal with anybody at this point. Then after I uh, left, and then after that, I went up to the tattoo shop. I said, Rev, give me my fucking amp. I'm out of the band. You know, I've had enough of this bullshit. And uh, I got my amp. I went home. And I was like, oh, thank God. You know, I mean, it kind of sucked because I wanted to continue playing, but I didn't want to play, you know, these fucking stupid games. So um, about a week later, I was in Collinsville. Um, I had to go pick somebody up or something and I stopped at the uh, mini mart there and um, the girl recognized me because I was in there with Lefty because he lived down there and she was asking me she is oh hey what about all that money you made I'm like what money she's like oh Lefty was in here with all this cash and he said you he said you guys made two grand a piece I'm like <laughs> I never saw a fucking dime of that so I called up Rev he's like oh you just went along for the ride you fucking homo <sighs> You talk about some anti-Semitism, some name calling. So I mean, I was kind of after them for a while for my money, you know. And then Lefty was like, "Oh, you said you hated Mexicans." I never said I hated Mexicans, <laughs> which you know shows the mentality of these people. So after that, I remember uh, there was a big fight, you know, I called them up, you know, because I had it at this point, you know, and Lefty's like, oh, Dwayne's on the phone, what should I do, what should I do, why can't you think for your fucking self, you know, and I remember he had the phone to Rev, Rev called me a homo, and I said, well, I hope you guys crash your van, and no sooner I said that, they crashed into the back of a chicken truck, <laughs> which I do have the power, so anyway, um, the last show I played with them was in Pittsburgh um, I had to come back I did a show with them and that was that you know um, that was it so anyway um, you know that was a, the most horrible experience I've had being in a band you know I would never play with those guys again and then in the year after that I remember some kid come up to me and he's like oh here I'm the bass player of this band. You ought to check us out. He gives me an only flesh card. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, uh, dude, you replaced me. Um, yeah, you're not going to last very long in that band. I gave you six months tops. He goes, oh, no, no, no. Rev's cool. Rev's cool. Well, lo and behold, this guy was in the band maybe six months. And they kicked him out, too. I mean, nobody lasted in that band. I mean, it was terrible. You know, not, you know, I mean, just, you know, I think people lasted maybe six months to a year, and that was it. They were out of that band. <laughs> then he went and spread rumors about me. They said, oh, uh, Dwayne's a heroin addict. But in the meantime, you know, Red was shoving coke up his nose. You know, I was no heroin addict. <laughs> you know, I mean, I was just a bunch of made-up bullshit, you know. <laughs> I mean, I was on medication for my back, but other than that, I was no heroin addict. And I mean, I was, you know, just after a while, I was just glad to get these guys out of my life. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I'd never join this shit again. You know, it was just something that, uh, it was a very bad experience. And even now, you know, I, I've had trouble getting into bands because of these people. You know, they've spread all kinds of lies and rumors about me. 
and it's like, why, you know, I mean, you got me out of the band, you know, just do your thing and I'll do mine, but obviously they, you know, couldn't do that, so, I mean, it was bad, I, you know, I'm glad I left that band, you know, they cut me out of a lot of pictures on their videos and everything, and, um, you know, this, it just shows that, you know, little, little girl mentality, you know, so anyway, uh, you know, that's my story. I mean, they can say whatever the hell they want to. I don't care. But, um, never again. <laughs> but yeah, I was in a couple really other good bands. Um, I played in a band called Radioactive, uh, Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers, The Junk, Velvet Hollow was uh, my favorite band. Because, I mean, I was friends with all those people. We all knew one another for years when we had this going. And, um, we just, um, broke up the, uh, guitar player. He had, uh, diabetes and just wasn't well. And, um, everybody just kind of wanted to do their own thing after a while. I was in another band called The Junk. And, um, we just kind of phased out and got back together later on as the Vicious Canids with a new drummer. And that drummer was lefty, of course, because this guy here just seemed like every band I was in with him... You know, he'd get in the band, and he'd just talk some shit, and <laughs> I don't want to get into it, but, um, you know, I've had good experiences in other bands, but, you know, this is the only band I've really hated, so, uh, yeah, that's my story, I'm speaking out, and, um, if anybody wants to play some real music, you know, hook, you know, give me a call or whatever, and, uh, We'll do that, you know, I like uh, Old Mod Revival and, you know, the stuff from the 60s. So, uh, anyway, uh, cheers, nice talking to you all, my story, bye-bye.